creating graphical user interfaces makes it a breeze for users to interact with a script. Whether it is for data entry or for viewing data, GUIs can increase efficiency and make your programs usable by anyone. This makes it possible to distribute or to sell your applications. In Python, there are a wide variety of GUI libraries that can help you out. But which is the best? First up, there's tkinter. This is perhaps the most common one you'll come across since it comes with every installation of Python. tkinter is simple to get started with and should only take a few days to learn. It has straightforward functions for using widgets and creating applications, alongside easy-to-use layout managers and support for event handling. For example, here's the amount of code it takes to create a simple calculator. There are packages that can improve the appearance of tkinter, such as custom tkinter which provides widgets that have been customized to look much better and also allow for more customization. TTK Bootstrap is another package that provides widgets and pre-made themes for TKinter that have already been styled to improve your application's look and feel. But by itself, TKinter's look and feel is outdated. It lacks advanced widgets and it has limited customization options, usually only being able to customize the background and text color. TKinter also only has about 20 to 30 widgets on its own for basic things such as adding text and getting user input. But due to its popularity, there are also many third-party extensions and packages that you can find to help add additional widgets and functionalities to the library. Here's one that can add tables, and here's one that can help to add calendar widgets. Next up, there's PyQt. PyQt has the most amount of widgets and has the most options available for customization, such as being able to add gradients, hover effects, and use style sheets, which is similar to using CSS for web applications. This gives you final control to implement the design you have in mind. If designing using code isn't your thing, PyQt also has Qt Designer, which makes it possible to drag and drop widgets to then convert to code to create your application. The library has more than 100 widgets, including tables, list views, even web browsers, data visualizations, dialog boxes, calendars, and video playback widgets are built in without having to use external packages, most of which other GUI libraries don't have built in. For example, here's a code to make a text editor built with the library. And here's a drawing application made with it as well. PyQt uses a more object-oriented approach when it comes to building applications. For example, you create a class for your application's window and additional classes if you wish to add your own custom widgets or to extend the functionality of existing ones. This approach makes it easier to maintain your applications, but does also makes it more difficult to learn. Of all, it should take about 1-3 to three weeks before you get familiar to the way applications are created with PyQt. And since there are a multitude of styling options and widgets available, it also usually takes longer to create your applications and style them than with other libraries. With PyQt, you will need external packages to add additional functionality of widgets, since the library has practically everything made built in, but there are still packages that can help their pre-made themes and icons to your applications which speed up development. Next up, there's PySimpleGUI. This library's main goal is to prioritize making GUIs as easy to create and to understand, while being able to master within a few days. For example, instead of using layout managers and adding widgets to that layout, the way you create a layout is by placing the elements within a list for each row that you need. This, alongside many other improvements to current GUI libraries, makes it possible to create applications in just a few lines of code compared to others such as TK and Dump. So even if it's your first time programming, you can get up and running quickly. The library also includes a wide variety of demos and examples on its sites that encourages you to use as a starting point for your application. There are also a good selection of elements to choose from, from chat boxes to list boxes and pop-up dialogues. However, since it's meant to be as simple as possible, there aren't much customization you can do aside from the basic changing of colors and size. This also means that the library is best used for smaller projects since it prioritizes simplicity over scalability and maintainability. PySimple GUI is also built on top of TKinter, so it uses the widgets from TKinter but makes it simpler and quicker to create such applications by removing much of the boilerplate code that you need to rewrite. It can also be used to work with other GUI frameworks such as PyQt and WX Python using the same syntax, but those are currently still a work in progress. You do also have the ability to change the themes from a set of pre-made color combinations to change the look and feel of the application. Another popular GUI library is Kivi. Kivi allows you to build desktop graphical user interfaces and games and is the most popular choice for building mobile apps which can be done by using the Bulldozer package 
which was specifically meant for building mobile apps for Kiwi applications. When using the Kiwi library, you can also make use of the Kiwi language, which is used to add and style widgets, as well as to add event handlers to them. This can help in separating your concerns when designing your applications, and also makes it easier to reuse and to maintain your code. In my experience, this is much more intuitive and succinct than doing it with Python methods. In terms of widgets, the Kiwi library has about roughly 60 widgets available. This includes things that you would expect such as chat boxes, inputs, and layout managers, but also others such as accordions, carousels, and widgets that interact with the user's camera, for example. One great third-party library is KiwiMD. This library helps to drastically improve the look and feel of your application by making use of the styles in Google's material design system. This package is built on top of Kiwi, helping you enhance your designs, or also provide more pre-made styled widgets, icons, and themes to choose from. By itself, Kiwi widgets are also fairly customizable. This includes changing their colors, font, sizing, padding, and more advanced customizations like adding gradients and animations. Overall, the documentation for Kiwi also provides examples and explanations to help you get started. But since there are a multitude of widgets, layouts, and concepts to learn, learning it will probably take a few weeks before you get comfortable with using it. Lastly, there's WX Python. The library includes widgets such as buttons, text boxes, tables, and web browsers that can help you in creating simple and complex applications. However, the documentation isn't the best and do not provide much information or examples. The widgets also do look fairly outdated and there aren't many tutorials to learn from or third-party packages to add more widgets or to improve their appearances. I would personally recommend using PyQG if you want the most amount of widgets, features and customization. From web browsers to displaying video or date bakers, PyQG has pretty much every widget you need and allows you to customize them in practically every way possible. It also has a drag and drop interface you can use to create the interface of your application which makes development a tad bit faster. But due to the amount of features and the way you run applications with PyQT, it will also take longer to learn, usually within a month's time. If you're just looking to create GUIs as quickly as possible and don't care much about the design and features you have in doing so, PySimple GUI is a great option. You can easily learn it within a few days and make use of the great documentation and community to make applications as quickly as possible. If you can't quite decide which to use and want a library that is both fairly easy to learn, but also looks modern and has a great selection of widgets, I would recommend PKMDA. It has a large community and an abundance of tutorials online to get started with. On its own, it looks outdated and there aren't many widgets, but you can make use of external libraries to add more customization options and widgets such as with custom PKMDA and TTK brochure. Lastly, if you want to make mobile apps with Python, the most popular option would be to go with QV to make use of QVMD to easily adopt Google's material design system into your apps. As a side note, if you are looking to learn any of these libraries, I'll leave links in the description below with recommended tutorials and the necessary documentation to get started. Another thing to consider if you intend on distributing your applications is the license. For all the libraries shown in this video, except for PyQT, they are released under licenses that mostly allow you to freely use and distribute your application. But for PyQT, it is under the general public license where you can use your applications for personal use. But if you want to distribute or to sell your application, you need to give your users the source code as well. If that's not something you want to do, then you need to purchase a license for PyQT from Vivobank, which I'll leave a link to in the description below. Alternatively, if you want to distribute or to sell your PyQT applications without having to give access to your source code or have to pay for a license, you can use PySite instead which uses an LGPL license, allowing you to freely distribute or sell your applications. PySite and PyQT are incredibly similar, providing the same widgets and features, and both provide the Python bindings for the QT framework. Although PyQT is more popular and has more content and tutorials written for it since it was released first, PySite is created by QT, while PyQT was created by Riverbank Computing, which are two separate companies. There are only a few minor differences in the way that we write PyQT and PySite applications, and I'll leave a link in the description to an article that outlines those differences. That's all for this video. If you're interested in building GUI applications in Python, I'll recommend watching this video next. Besides that, that's all for this video. Please consider possibly liking it and subscribing to my channel for more of such content.